The Suicide Squad is directed and written by James Gunn. It is DC and Warner Brothers sequel slash second attempt at a Suicide Squad movie based off the DC villains based off the DC villain team from the comics aka Task Force X aka the Suicide Squad now I love James Gunn of course now James Gunn is now the current co-CEO of DC Studios and he's going to be overseeing the new DCU for upcoming years in the modern era. I love James Gunn. James Gunn is an expert, a connoisseur, a master at what he does. He's a master director, a master writer, a master storyteller, a master movie maker in general. He's a nerd. He's a huge comic book fan himself. And he actually knows about and loves all the characters. So I really think he's the best person for the job. He also has made the Guardians of the Galaxy movies for Marvel. And now he's doing amazing for DC. So I love James Gunn. So this movie, The Suicide Squad, is great. And it's much better than Suicide Squad, the first one. So this movie is hyper violent, it's hyper stylized, it's rated R, so it's not for kids. The action in this movie is great, the special effects are great, the whole movie is very stylized, it has these really cool title cards that pop up, the environment creates these really cool title cards throughout the film as they go to different places and do different things and the whole movie is very stylized it's basically like the first movie it's about the movie is about viola davis as amanda waller she is at bell reeve prison and she is putting together a team to go out on a, a super secret mission that only the villains can be a part of super villains from DC Comics and so she creates a team of super villains and implants these trackers in their skull so that if they go rogue she can basically kill them instantly and blow their heads up the costumes in this movie are great it's very comic accurate very vibrant colors very comic booky very cool I love it it's really cool Okay, so Amanda Waller sets up this team to go on this secret mission. And there's quite a lot of them. Team 1, she sends in a uh, helicopter to go storm a beach. And um, Team 1 of the Suicide Squad, a.k.a. Task Force X, includes Pete Davidson as Blackguard. I love Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson is awesome. He's a great comedic actor and I'm glad he was able to be in a big superhero movie. Nathan Fillion is TDK aka the detachable kid. His arms can come off and he can still control them while they're off of his body. It's very funny. Um, Flula Borg plays Javelin who he has this giant javelin as his name implies he uses that as a weapon Jai Courtney returns as Captain Boomerang he can throw boomerangs and like cut people up and cut their heads in half and decapitate and and cut people's limbs off and stuff it's really cool Sean Gunn plays Weasel who is a very hilarious character he's basically a giant weasel I guess Michael Rooker, who is a great actor, plays Savant. There's also Kaleidoscope and Mongol on the first team. So she sends uh, this team 
And now, spoilers, in case you haven't seen the movie, but this is happens at the very beginning. Um, so, the team storms the beach, and right as they drop off the team, Weasel doesn't know how to swim, so he just drowns immediately. And then they all start freaking out. And then this made me so mad, because I love Pete Davidson. And of course, Pete Davidson goes out um, to talk to the enemy about some sort of deal or whatever, which was incredibly stupid. He was an idiot in this moment. And they uh, basically annihilate him. They shoot him right in the face and kill him instantly as soon as the movie starts, as soon as they storm the beach. And this made me incredibly upset. I did not want him to die, but I mean, at least he was able to be in it for a little bit. And, in fact, after this, the entire team gets slaughtered. All of them die, except for um, Harley Quinn and Rick Flagg, who are also part of the team. And, yeah, freaking um, Captain Boomerang dies, which was very shocking and surprising, because he was, like, a main character in the first movie. And, um, basically, uh... Uh, Harley Quinn gets captured after this uh, failed attempt at storming the beach. But before she gets captured, Flew Labor's character Javelin is dying. And in his last dying breath, he gifts Harley Quinn his Javelin. He's about to say something really important to her as he's giving her the Javelin. And then he just dies. You have no idea what he was about to say. And she's like, what? What? What were you going to say? Wake up. He, he doesn't wake up. He's dead. So, then, after they all die... Oh, and then, um... Freaking Savant Michael Rooker... Once he sees everyone die, he just freaks the heck out. And runs away and goes rogue. So, uh, Amanda Waller just blows his head up. And then his blood forms the words, Warner Brothers Presents. And that was the intro of the movie. And then we realize that... There was a second team, which is the actual main team of the main characters of the movie, which includes Joel Kinnaman as Rick Flagg, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, Idris Elba as Bloodsport, John Cena as Peacemaker, Daniela Melkor as Ratcatcher 2, David Dismelchian as Polka Dot Man, and Sylvester Stallone as King Shark. And then, as after they all get slaughtered and die, we get there's a flashback back to the prison, so we see them alive again. And we have a quick cameo from Sean Gunn playing another character, a Batman villain known as Calendar Man. He's like making fun of a Polka Dot Man in the prison. And on uh, working for... Uh, Amanda Waller, Viola Davis. We also have Emilia Harcourt and John Economos, who uh, star in the Suicide Squad spin-off series Peacemaker as part of Team Peacemaker. So, in this movie, Idris Elba and John Cena and Margot Robbie are all standouts. They are great. Great actors. They're really good. And I enjoyed them a lot. Margot Robbie is obviously great as Harley Quinn. It's her third time playing the character. And she's just great at it. She's a perfect Harley Quinn, in my opinion. And uh, John Cena is hilarious in this movie. His comedic timing is great. He's very funny, very hilarious. And so, uh, basically... Um, Idris Elba and John Cena, once they get through the jungle, um, they're on this secret mission, and they're basically uh, trying to outdo each other and be, and compete and one up each other, which is really cool. It's very violent, and they're just they're assassins, so they're they're basically uh, Amanda Waller says they their fathers were assassins, and they taught them how to be killers from the moment they were born so they're both extremely skilled expert assassins and they're just 
executing and killing people left and right in really cool ways. And then it's a comedic beat because then you realize that they just killed all the freedom fighters that were uh, the resistance from the dictator in this country of Corto Maltese, which is a fictional country, but it is actually a place in the DC universe. So James Gunn knows his comics. And so yeah, that happens. Harley Quinn gets um, captured and um, then she falls in love with this uh, dictator and then she says if I ever fell in love with a man again and got a boyfriend if he was showing red flags then I would do the right thing. And I would murder him. And so she does. She murders him. And yeah, that was pretty funny and pretty shocking and cool. And so then. Oh, yeah. So this team, the Suicide Squad, Task Force X, they want to get the thinker. So they go to this nightclub and. They're, they're playing James Gunn Loves His Music. And there's some really great songs in this movie. They go to this nightclub. And the song playing is by K. Flay. Can't Sleep. And it's a great song. And then we have a quick little cameo by Palm Clementif From the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. As a dancer in the nightclub. But it's really hard to see. It's like an Easter egg. So you might miss it. And... Then, um, Harley Quinn, uh, is being held captive in, uh, the dictator's place. And so she breaks free, and it's very violent, and it's very stylized. I love her outfit, straight from the comics, red and black dress. And she's able to do some amazing action scenes in this outfit. And she's using uh, machine guns. She's using javelins, javelin, and slitting people's throats and stuff. And it's so stylized because instead of blood, it's like flowers and animated birds. And it's just very stylized. And then she realizes that the, the, t the team of the Suicide Squad had this whole plan to go rescue her. And they were about to uh, go through with the plan. And then they realized she just broke out. So they didn't need to do anything. And it's very, very funny. This whole movie is very funny. All the jokes land. It's a hilarious movie. They meet this guy, Milton, who's like their sidekick. And um, a cool Easter egg cameo is that... A cool Easter egg is that there is a cameo by the one and only Taika Waititi who's a great Marvel director and a great actor as well. He plays Ratcatcher 1, Ratcatcher 2's father. So that was cool. And they had a very touching story about how he was teaching her and he was addicted to drugs, like heroin or meth or something. And he uh, dies from a drug overdose. And it's very tragic because... He dies as she was a little girl, so. And she takes up the rat catcher mantle. And so, um, David Dills Melchian's character, Polka Dot Man, his powers are super cool. He can expel polka dots from his body, which basically disintegrate people and things, which is really cool. And, um,. So they rescue Harley Quinn, then they realize that there was an ulterior motive in that Amanda Waller wants, uh, because they captured the thinker, he knows about Project Starfish. So um, they go to this lab and then they slaughter a bunch of people in the ring, which is really cool because like the blood is contrasting with the white and the water. It's super ultra violent and hyper violent, but it's really cool. John Cena is chopping people up and King Shark is ripping people and 
eating them and stuff. It's crazy. Uh, King Shark, this guy right here, he eats a lot of people during this movie. In fact, at one point, he eats this guy's head and his eyes are like still moving. His head is in his mouth. It's really funny and really graphic, but it's it's cool. And so, um, they go and the big villain of the movie is Starro the Conqueror, which is basically this alien that was floating in space. This uh, little starfish type thing, alien being, and the... Uh, uh, astronauts encountered it and captured it and started doing experiments on it so they took it down to Puerto Maltese and were uh, doing these illegal experiments that were completely unethical and morally horrible and basically torturing Starro and all these people and um, so once this is like the crux of the movie and then uh, John Cena and Rick Flagg, they like come into conflict because they're like, these are the secrets. This is what Amanda Waller really wanted us to get. And no one can know about it. And they uh, start to fight. It's a very brutal fight. And it's super cool and stylized because you see the fight through John Cena's Peacemaker helmet through the reflection. So it's super cool, super dope. And then, unfortunately, John Cena kills Rick Flagg. So John Cena be now becomes the villain of the movie. He's brutal. He's, he kills him. Then he goes and he's about to kill De Daniela Melkor, rat catcher. And then just as he's about to shoot her, um, freaking uh, Polka Dot Man uses polka dots and hits some bombs on accident and it blows up the building and uh blood spore idris elba <coughs> the the place blows up and then he literally is at the top of the building on the top floor he falls through every single floor and then lands right at the basement where right in front of john cena as he's about to execute rat catcher too and so they become they come to a mexican standoff or a western standoff like a western shootout and then they both pull their guns and shoot and earlier when they were fighting and competing against each other he says oh yeah well i use smaller bullets and so blood sports bullet their bullets literally go right towards each other but blood sports bullet goes through john cena's bullet and unfortunately depending on whether you like uh peacemaker or not even though he's sort of bad as the villain at this point, uh, John Cena gets shot in the net and dies, presumably. So he's done. And then, um, and then they, oh, so, uh, David Dismelchian, there's this hilarious, uh, bit gag where, uh, comedic thing where he keeps, uh, his mother was a scientist at Star Labs and she was obsessed with making her children turning them into superheroes so he like for some reason just sees his mother everywhere and then when Starro breaks free and it's the Suicide Squad versus Star the Conqueror Idris Elba says you know who that is that's your mom and so he goes crazy and starts using his powers on her and cuts her leg off and then he tells King Shark that he should eat Starro, so King Shark runs up, jumps up, starts eating Starro. And then, uh, after Polka Dot Man attacks uh, Starro and is successful, he's like, I'm a superhero! I'm a mother effing superhero! And then he gets killed instantly by Starro. Starro steps on him and kills him. So I was like, No! Because I love that character. He was so funny and cool. And that made me mad. But, um,. And then, um, Ratcatcher 2 summons a bunch of rats. Harley Quinn uses the javelin and runs, does parkour off a building, stabs Starro right through the pupil, and then the rats go and eat Starro. And then as Starro dies, he says, I was just floating in space looking at the stars. That's all I wanted to do.
And so it's sort of a sympathetic villain where he realized, you know, Starro wasn't evil. He was just this alien. He just wanted to float and stare at the stars in space. <clears throat> but of course, humans, they had to mess everything up and, and turn it into a bad thing. And then uh, Bloodsport Idris Elba gets over his fear of rats. And that's the end of the movie. Except for, then we cut to the beach from the very beginning of the movie. And we realize that Sean Gunn, Weasel, didn't die. He's actually alive. And he just wanders off into the forest to eat some children or something. And if you pay really close attention to the beginning of the movie... I think actually Nathan Fillion's TDK on the, uh, it says like um, on Amanda Waller's uh, screen, all of them are deceased except for TDK. It says he's like compromised or something. But, um, but yeah, before they defeat Starro, uh, you know, they were supposed to just get the evidence and leave after John Cena dies. And Amanda Waller's going freaking crazy and she's like, I'm gonna kill you all if you don't don't do my mission and they're like forget that we're gonna kill Starro and so she's about to blow them up and then uh, John Economos and Amelia Harcourt and their people they freaking uh, clock her in the head with something and then they take over the operation and then if you wait to the very end credits after credits there's a post credit scene we see John Economos and Amelia Harcourt which is actually James Gunn's wife in real life he gives her roles in all of his movies, which it will be probably be that way in the upcoming DC movies for the new DCU. They go to a hospital and they say, he's still alive. He still has a heartbeat. We need him. And so people are thinking like, who is it? What, who survived? Was it Rift Flag or who, who survived? And then they go and then it cuts towards this guy in a hospital bed. In critical condition and it's John Cena's peacemaker he's alive and they say what do you need him for and she says oh you know we need him we just need him to save the freaking world and then that's the end and so of course that brings us to uh, John Cena is so great in the movie as peacemaker that he got his very own brand new spin-off series called peacemaker which stars John Cena as Peacemaker, the title character, su supervillain, and also Emilia Harcourt and John Economos, who are great. Like, in this movie, they're just throwaway characters. Like, they barely have any lines, except for uh, John Economos is like, oh my god, we got a freaking kaiju up in this shit. And that was freaking hilarious. But um, when Starro, like, pops out, and he's like, what the hell is that? And, uh... The Peacemaker series is really good. I might do a review of that. Peacemaker was so successful. It's one of the most watched and highest reviewed shows of all time. It's a HBO Max show, which is now called Max. And um, this movie, The Suicide Squad, is the best reviewed DC movie. So that's pretty cool that it... Uh, achieved that it was uh, loved by critics and it was very successful probably due to James Gunn and you know all the things I said like the great actors and it was much better than the first and I really recommend this movie